See the light above my head? Watch this. I have no idea if I'm doing this right because I can't see a thing. Not bad. Hi there, and welcome to Gimme2. My name is Mark, and in this video, we will discuss solar eclipses in just two minutes. As with my other videos, if you want to go straight to the two minutes, which discusses the steps and what happens during a solar eclipse, that is timestamped in the description. But if you stick around for a couple of minutes before that, I go through some of the science behind eclipses and some other context that might be worth sticking around for. Eclipses, both solar and lunar, are celestial phenomena that occur when one celestial body moves into the shadow of another. Lunar eclipses occur when the Earth moves between the Sun and the Moon, casting its shadow onto the Moon. Solar eclipses, on the other hand, occur when the Moon moves between the Earth and the Sun, casting its shadow onto the Earth. But not all shadows are created equal. Shadows are areas where light from a source is being blocked by an object. We see this all the time. There are three regions or types of shadows. The umbra, Latin for shadow, penumbra, Latin for nearly shadow, and antumbra, Latin for before the shadow. The umbra is the central darkest part of the shadow where the light source is completely blocked. The penumbra is the lighter outer region where only part of the light source is blocked. And the antumbra is also a partial blockage, which occurs when the blocking or occluding object appears smaller than the light source that it's blocking. The type of shadow cast is dependent on factors like how spread out versus direct the light source is, the distance between the light source and the object casting the shadow, and the distance between the shadow casting object and the surface where the shadow is projected. During total solar eclipses, both umbral and penumbral shadows will be cast onto Earth. Any area that falls into the penumbra will only see a partial eclipse. Even during a partial eclipse, you should not look directly at the sun unless you're wearing special solar protecting glasses. The sun is still casting plenty of light that can damage your eyes. Any area that falls within the umbra, though, will experience a total solar eclipse, where the moon completely blocks the sun's light. During totality, it is safe to look at the sun even without those protective solar glasses. Here's the thing, though. The sun is about 865,000 miles in diameter, and the moon is only about 2160. So how does the moon completely block the sun, which is about 400 times wider? Ah, the wonders of distances. You see, the sun is about 93 million miles away from Earth on average, while the moon averages about 236,000, which is about, you guessed it, 400 times closer. This remarkable coincidence means that from our perspective on Earth, the moon and the sun appear at roughly the same size in our sky. And this size parity is essential for solar eclipses. If you jump back in this video a little bit, you'll notice that I said that those distances were averages, but the Earth's and the Moon's orbits are not completely circular, leading to distance variations. At its closest point to Earth, known as perigee, the Moon, only about 226,000 miles away, appears slightly larger in the sky while at its furthest point, known as Apogee, about 250,000 miles away, it appears slightly smaller. This size difference plays a crucial role in determining what kind of eclipse we'll see. Total solar eclipses only occur when the Moon is closer to Earth, appearing large enough to completely block out the Sun. If the Moon appears too small, we'll get an annular eclipse, where the outside ring of the Sun is still visible. Referencing back to the shadow conversation, during an annular eclipse, will be in the Sun's antumbra. Okay, next question. The Moon orbits the Earth roughly every 27.3 days. At some point during that orbit, it will come between the Earth and the Sun. So why don't we see solar eclipses all the time? Well, we sort of do. There are between two and five solar eclipses every year somewhere on Earth, but most of those are partial. Earth gets treated to a total solar eclipse roughly every 18 months, but they seem extremely rare because most of those are over water, which covers about 70% of the Earth's surface. But still, shouldn't we see an eclipse every time the Moon comes between the Sun and the Earth, so 
roughly once a month? Well, that's simple. That's because of orbital planes. No? Is that not helping? Okay, okay, let me explain. The moon orbits the Earth, and the Earth orbits the sun, but those orbits aren't completely leveled with each other. The moon's orbit of the Earth is on a roughly 5 degree tilt relative to the Earth's orbit of the sun. Therefore, even if the moon comes between the Earth and the sun, if it's not on the same orbital plane, called the ecliptic, then it won't block the sun's light, and we won't get an eclipse. Considering all of these factors, namely the distances of the moon and the sun, their orbital dynamics, and the tilts of their orbits, precise alignments and conditions are necessary in order to experience a total solar eclipse. So let's take this information and put it all together in the two minutes, explaining how these phenomena play out. Before we do, however, if you find this content enjoyable, entertaining, or informative, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on similarly styled content on a variety of topics. It also really does help the channel grow and for videos like these to reach broader audiences. But for now, let's get back to eclipses in the two minutes, starting now. A total solar eclipse is a breathtaking celestial spectacle where the moon temporarily blocks the sun's light from view. Total solar eclipses occur when three astronomical conditions coincide. Firstly, the moon must appear larger than the sun. This occurs when the moon gets closer and the sun further from the Earth. Secondly, the moon must be on the same level or plane as the Earth's orbit of the sun. And finally, the moon must align directly between the Earth and the sun. As the moon moves into alignment between the Earth and the sun, we experience an eclipse in five stages. The eclipse begins when the moon's silhouette first touches the edge of the sun's disk, initiating a partial block of the sun. This stage is called first contact and leads to a partial eclipse, which casts a penumbra or weak shadow onto Earth as the moon crosses the sun. Second contact occurs when the moon covers all but the edges of the sun. Viewers are treated to awe-inspiring spectacles, starting with Bailey's beads and then the diamond ring effect, as the final semblances of light slip through the moon's edges and valleys. The eclipse climaxes with totality, when the moon fully covers the sun, casting an umbra or full shadow onto Earth. During totality, the sky will resemble a 360-degree sunset, temperatures can drop, certain bright stars can even be seen, and nocturnal animals might even wake up out of confusion. Totality's duration will vary based on your location or the astronomical conditions, but won't exceed 7 minutes and 29 seconds in a given location. Once the sun reappears, the descending steps of the eclipse, third and fourth contact, will resemble the first two steps, but as the moon moves away from the sun rather than toward it. And that's what happens during a total solar eclipse. I hope you enjoyed that video. I find solar eclipses to be fascinating and beautiful, and this video is being recorded right before the April 8th, 2024 eclipse, which I hope to see. I learned a lot about the science behind eclipses, which I hope I was able to deliver clearly to you. There's a lot more detail when it comes to the science and the math of solar eclipses, but I hope I was able to cover the gist of the celestial mechanics. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.